Welcome to the Real Life Show, Living with a Chronic Illness. We are your hosts, Cassie and Chelsea. I'm Cassie, a single mom living with a chronic illness who is extremely passionate about living a full and happy life. And I'm Chelsea, a mindset coach that has a passion for helping people learn to put themselves first and be the best version of themselves each and every day. We came together to create Spoonies Unite, an uplifting community that offers resources, guidance, and support so you can live your best life while giving you the space to be yourself, be heard, and feel understood. This show is not only for those who live with a chronic illness, but their friends, family, spouses, and just anyone else existing on the earth. There's a little something in here for everyone. Thank you to our patrons for your continued support making this possible. If you love our show and want to get some extra goodies, go to patreon.com slash the real spoonies unite. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the real life show living with a chronic illness. I'm Chelsea and I'm here with Cassie. Yay. So today we are talking all about what a chronic illness actually is. So our real motivation behind this episode is for it to be a resource that you can send to someone that maybe is curious about what a chronic illness is or is trying to figure out a little bit more about what you're going through every day. So Cassie and I, we would like to start off by saying that we are not medical practitioners. We are no. not. We're Pilates instructors, people. Yep. And yes, we have I our have, own experiences. Yes. But are by no way advising Yes. Medical stuff. So we will be talking about kind of our own definitions of what a chronic illness is and kind of how we view that. Um, We've also done some research, found some definitions on the internet, and we'll kind of be talking about how those sit with us Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So again, this episode is great for if you're just trying to, to learn how to define a chronic illness or if you would like to send it to someone that's wanting to learn a little bit more about what you're going through. So start us off. Cassie, how would you describe a chronic illness as someone who has a chronic illness Mm -hmm. diagnosis? Right. Okay. So yes, my version of a chronic illness. And for those of you who don't know, I have Crohn's disease, which is an autoimmune digestive disease, Um, which by the way is interesting. There's IBS and then there's IBD, which that's kind of one of the interesting things, you know, disease versus just illness. Anyway, um, so how I would describe chronic illness would be um, struggles that physical or mental, I guess, emotional too, but very much physical ailments and struggles that affect you on a daily basis that can be repetitive, um, huge amounts of ups and downs. Um, it's constantly an up and a down. You never know how long your up or your down may last. Um, for example, today is Monday, and I have not showered since Thursday morning. I'm actually wondering if it was Wednesday night and that I just did my hair Thursday morning, <laughs> either Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Um, and I am just simply too tired to shower. That is going to take way too much energy, too many spoons. And so it's just, I can't actually put that energy into showering. So I'm dry shampooing. I have washed my face and brushed my teeth. I've not washed my hair or showered. I promise you all that Cassie is still (laughs) practicing personal hygiene. Yes, I am clean in most ways at this time. (laughs) Um, But for example, that would be um, what I would say is an example of living with a chronic illness is when you simply do not have the energy to shower. And this is a regular occurrence. You know, it might be that like next week I go through the exact same thing. I mean, I I thought about showering tonight, but I'm not going to lie. I'm really considering just postponing it until tomorrow. And I went to bed at 8.30 p.m. last night. I slept, tired, headaches. Um, So I think when it is affecting your daily life, And what also makes it chronic illness is when it is over and over again, repetitive, and not just like when you have the flu and you know that there's an end point. Um, With me not feeling great and low energy the last several days, I have no idea when that's going to be over. It Mm -hmm. might be that I wake up feeling more energized tomorrow, or it might be two months from now that I wake up and feel more energized. So I think that would be part of the chronic illness. What do you think, Chelsea? Chelsea? So as someone who does not have a chronic illness, um, but I've worked with a lot of people and I have lots of friends like Cassie that have chronic illnesses, I would say that it's something that one, again, you're not going to have a cure from. And I think that 
it's tricky in the fact that there's not like a guaranteed treatment plan or symptom monitoring plan. Mm -hmm. Um, Like for Crohn's disease, what works for one person with Crohn's might not work for another person. Mm -hmm. And so I think figuring out exactly what that means for you and that trial and error and taking it day by day. Um, I know when I've done personal training or Pilates with individuals that have chronic illness or done some coaching even, it's a lot about, well, how do you feel today? What do you need today? What can we do to maybe help you keep feeling better Or if you're not feeling so good, what can we do to help you feel better? Um, I know with one of my personal training clients that had a uh, multiple chronic illness diagnosis, she, I never knew what I, what version of her I was going to get. I never knew if I was going to get the version that I could kick her ass and I could make her do ball slams and rope slams and really push her. Or if I was going to get the version of her that was so tired and so drained that walking around the track was pretty much all we were going to do, which was perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think a big thing is just, it's a different struggles that you're getting day by day that again, have the ups and downs day by day. And so it just kind of depends on how you're feeling. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. I think that's a really, really good point because even as one with the chronic illness, you don't know how you're going to feel when you wake up in the morning. And even when you wake up and have your coffee or your tea, you don't know how you're going to feel two hours from then Mm -hmm. or how you're going to feel that night. And so having people who understand that and kind of let you be wherever you are at that point is a real gift. Yeah. And I think also allowing yourself to feel how you need to feel. Because I've worked with some people that have just shut down those feelings, which we could talk about for a very long time. So I won't dive into it. And probably will. Yes, In a future episode. And... So just kind of honoring how you feel Denial, right there. not just a river in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so those are kind of our definitions of what a chronic illness is. And we did some research. So we went to the Googles, which is not always a great place to go for health information. Yeah. But we did find some definitions that we thought were kind of interesting. So when we, I would like to say that we looked up chronic illness. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the definitions we were getting were for chronic disease, which is something we're going to kind of talk about a little bit too. So Medicine Net describes a chronic disease as being something that lasts three months or more um, and is generally cannot be prevented by vaccines or cured by medication, and they also will not disappear. So basically something that you're going to have forever <laughs> that lasts more than three that, months. That can't be cured. Yeah. Or, or um, that has a cure <laughs> or right. Yeah. It can, it can, can be, be cured. cured by that medication. Yep. Right. Cannot be cured. So Wikipedia does uh, defines a chronic condition um, as a human health condition or disease that is persistent or otherwise long lasting in its effects or a disease that comes with time. The term chronic is often applied when the course of the disease lasts for more than three months Common chronic diseases include arthritis, asthma, cancer, COPD, diabetes, and viral diseases such as hepatitis C and HIV or AIDS. Um, so then also one of our, we have two more definitions for you. So the World Health Organization states that a chronic disease is not passed from person to person. They are of long duration and generally slow progression. And they have four main types, cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks and stroke, Cancers, chronic respiratory diseases like chronic obstructed pulmonary disease, COPD, as well as asthma, and then diabetes. And then the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, uh, has chronic diseases as defined broadly as conditions that limit one year or more and require ongoing medical attention or limit activities of daily living like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, um, and the CDC says that it's often caused by poor lifestyle choices. Ugh, I was like totally really liking the CDC's definition until that last yeah, one. Yeah, me too. Often <laughs> caused by poor. I was like, this is the this is the one that resonates. You know, limit activities of daily living or both, and then it's like often caused by poor lifestyle choices, which I, I think, call bullshit on that one. <laughs> and I think if you're looking specifically at heart disease. Type 2 diabetes, Mm -hmm. potentially some cancers. I think that those maybe have some connection to lifestyle choices, Mm -hmm. but your Crohn's is probably not because of a lifestyle choice. No, and there's so many. And then if you think of children that have chronic disease Mm -hmm. or very like hereditary 
DNA stuff that you can't control. I mean, or environmental triggers that triggered your disease. Mm -hmm. And so that's, those are some pretty interesting definitions. And I think the thing that I found the most interesting looking at these definitions is they really did kind of focus on like heart disease, cancer, or respiratory diseases, or like things like diabetes, but they weren't talking so much necessarily about like um, autoimmune diseases Mm -hmm. or genetic diseases or um, just things that I think the chronic illness community, you see a lot of those diagnoses with, but they're not touched on in these definitions. Like like World Health Organization, CDC, massive organizations in our world are not really touching on what a chronic illness really is. They have a very small view, which I think right. might connect to the fact that people with chronic illnesses have such a hard time getting information from our current healthcare system. Right. Getting information and also... and often feeling as though we have to defend ourselves, Mm -hmm. that we're not hypochondriacs. This isn't all in our heads. We are feeling this way. This is going on and this is real and happening in our bodies. I think that it's interesting that you brought up the, is this going on in our head concept? Because we also were asking ourselves, well, our mental health issues, our mental illness is also considered a chronic illness. And so we did find a definition from psychiatry.org that said that mental illness is a medical condition just like heart disease or diabetes. Um, But we also found another source um, from cchr.org, which stands for the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. And they say that the psychiatric disorders are not mental diseases. There are no lab tests, brain scans, x-rays, or chemical imbalance tests that can verify any mental disorder um, like a physical condition. And... Cassie and I definitely had some feelings and thoughts that came up mm-hmm. with this, especially the second definition. Um, Cause I know that there's a lot of people in the chronic illness community that their lab tests are coming back clear. Their MRIs, their CT scans, their x-rays are coming back clear, but they still, they're not feeling the way they, they know that they should be. And that they know that there's something wrong. And so I think by just saying like, Oh, you only have a disease if so-and-so tests come back positive or negative, yeah, it's really limiting. Point. It's super limiting. That's a that's a great point because there's many of us out there that know that we are living with something chronic, illness or disease, um, or chronic mental illness mm-hmm. or disorders. And then yeah, there isn't going to be a scan or a test or a label that can that we you know, we're still searching yeah. for that. And Chelsea and I both feel like mental health issues, mental health disorders, mental health illness. Um, are under that chronic illness umbrella. Um, Especially when you think of the way that it can impact your daily life, Um, your body. I mean, when you've got anxiety, you lose feeling in your hands, you want to throw up, you feel like you could faint. Some people do. You get physical chest pain. You end up in the emergency room thinking you're having a heart attack. I mean, you know, to say that it doesn't affect you is, or that it's not a, a chronic illness is crazy. We yeah, totally think it like is. That's not really a fair statement. So one source that we really found interesting mm-hmm. was while we were doing our research was the Sadar, and I really hope I'm saying this right, Sadar Psychological and Sports Center. Um, so they really started talking about the difference between disease and illness. And so these are clinical psychologists. Um, So they definitely are also looking at it from a mental health perspective as well, I would assume, um, from what we kind of looked at. And one thing that they said that was super interesting is that disease is something that needs to be cured. Illness is something that needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of felt like disease is something that potentially has a cure to it. Illness is more of that something that you're dealing with on your day-to-day basis that you're having to kind of manage those symptoms a little bit more. And we thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah, um... I really like this quote from them too, that according to this way of thinking, disease is something that needs to be cured, such as an infection, injury, toxic exposure, cell degeneration, etc. Illness is something that needs to be managed, such as feelings of pain, discomfort, distress, weakness, fatigue, etc. Which one of the things that sticks out to me is these illness things that need to be managed are not measurable, like with those mm-hmm. tests or scans. How does one measure or yeah, test the pain, discomfort, distress, weakness, or fatigue. Oh, yeah. And so that's kind of an interesting distinction that sticks out to me, too. Well, it's so much more personal. Like, if you're someone that's got Mm -hmm. a high pain tolerance, then on a scale of 1 to 10, Mm -hmm. you might 
never, it might take forever for you to get to the 10, that really, really intense pain. But if you're someone who maybe has like a lower pain tolerance, like your 10 is going to happen really fast. And it's, it's so subjective to how you feel that really, how can you like quantify fatigue or pain or discomfort or all those things? It's just because it's what you're feeling within your own And what you're living body. with and what you're used to. Yeah. I mean, if you're living every day at like a one or two on the pain level, fatigue at like a three, yeah. then, you know, when you get, when you hit those sixes or something, that six might be different from someone who yeah. isn't living at a one or two. But two. if you're someone who doesn't live with that every single day, then yeah, you're, the moment you go up to like a three or a four, your life is going to go, whoa, I don't right. like this. This is weird. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of go on to also talk about in the same article that, um, these two kind of this disease and illness are not necessarily mutually exclusive. They often, um, occur together. And another thing that they kind of started talking about was that traditionally trained medical doctors are trained to treat diseases. They're not so much trained to treat illnesses, which I think is hearing experiences for other individuals that have chronic illness that I've talked to, or even just my experience going to the doctor as someone that doesn't have a chronic illness is you go to the doctor, you tell them their symptoms and they doctors either have a test to give you that says that you have this or that. Like if you, if I feel sick, can I go to the doctor? Cause I have the flu. They give me a flu test. It's either positive or negative, And then they, based off of that result, they give you a certain treatment. Mm-hmm. But if you're managing those day-to-day symptoms, they're not really trained how to do that. Right. And so that's where maybe you find some of the struggles of having a chronic illness with our more traditional healthcare practices. They're just, they don't have the tools in their tool belt unless they've taken their time to get them themselves and get additional training and education. And so finding more holistic practitioners could be more successful. And I know that's something that, um, when we've talked to some other people in our community that they've had success with, um, we did a, a meeting webinar presentation just a couple weeks ago with Abby Boyd, one of our uh, members of our uh, Facebook group, our little Spoonies community, um, who she's had POTS for quite a large time of her life. And she doesn't really go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. She said, she's like, my disease isn't curable. And so she's like, I've learned how to manage it is Mm -hmm. what she said, which was really interesting because it fits in so much with all of this research that Chelsea and I have done. And Speaking of finding, you know, the holistic approach and everything, um, in that same article, there was an interesting thing that says, um, traditional medicine does not often make the distinction between disease and illness, which leads to unnecessary and unwise surgeries and prescriptions in a doomed attempt to cure an illness. This has been a hope and belief that Western medicine would cure all disease and illness, but it is becoming increasingly obvious that this is simply not to be. For your own well-being and that of your loved ones, begin to try to make this distinction and seek out the proper health care provider for what ails you. Alternatives to Western medication can often be the best way to treat an illness, which is really interesting because they are talking and trying to teach you that you do have to treat the illness as well as the disease Mm -hmm. and maybe seeing them as, yeah, not mutually exclusive. And that was pretty interesting to me. Um, in a lot of ways I'm on medications to treat my disease, but my illness is defined by this, which kind of says most of my symptoms are not being treated. Um, and I constantly feel like I'm having to defend myself to say, no, I'm still ill. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I have this disease that also is not managed, but I'm still ill. So that's, that's pretty interesting. And it sounds like, yeah, our lady with POTS, who is going to be on a future episode on here. Um, Her saying, I'm not seeing a doctor right now to treat my POTS and I'm managing it was pretty interesting. Yeah. That's what works for her, by the way. Other people that may not work for. And I think that's with all the research we've done, even the discussion we're having right now, I think trying to define a chronic illness is really challenging because I think everyone has their own experience of it. Uh, And putting one blanket definition on something that can truly be so broad Mm -hmm. is really challenging. And so sometimes I feel like by trying to put a specific definition onto what a chronic illness is and not in focusing less on the experience that the people are having and just trying to like medically define it, 
it almost takes away from that experience of what people are truly going through every single day. Yeah. So kind of to start wrapping some of those ideas up, one thing that Cassie and I are really um, passionate about doing is helping to one normalize chronic illness. And we talk all the time about maybe things that I'm going through or things that she's experiencing. And we've really come to realize that we both go through the same shit just mm-hmm. on kind of various different levels. Um, so really, anyone that has a chronic illness is just like everyone else. We're all at a basic level the same. We just experience life on different levels. So like, for example, I still have to think about what I'm eating and if it's going to make me feel good or not. Like, I love me some spicy chicken sandwiches at Chick-fil-A, but <laughs> there's like a 50-50 chance I'm going to feel completely terrible afterwards. But for me, if I feel terrible, it's for like, maybe 30 minutes or an hour or two and then it's passed through my system and then we move on and it's fine. But like, Cassie, if you eat something that... Oh, it could affect me for weeks or or longer. I mean, it could put me out for days. It could, it could affect me for weeks. And yeah, that is something that Chelsea and I want to, that we've been finding is, yeah, we both experience fatigue Mm -hmm. and brain fog and it can just sometimes when you have a chronic illness be at a bigger, more amplified level, more life affecting level. Not to say that for those who don't have a chronic illness that the fatigue and brain fog you're experiencing isn't valid. It's just sometimes maybe, I don't know, maybe it's less challenging to get through the day. Possibly, if you're experiencing yeah, I think that could it, be part think? of it. I think it could be part of it. Um, and also just... I think kind of the like longevity of those symptoms. Um, Not that I haven't had weeks where I feel like I'm tired the entire time or I'm experiencing a high level of brain fog, but it doesn't last months and months. And that was one thing that I did kind of did agree with when it came to the chronic um, disease diagnosis definitions was something that lasts three months or more. Right. So because chronic, it means it's lasting for a long time. And so for me, I might have brain fog. And it might last a week or so, but it's not lasting three months. Yeah. And that kind of makes me think about when you can push your body to limits too. Like mm-hmm. for you going through grad school and you could like push yourself to these no. insane, you know, limitations for your body where you're like, I can keep going. I can keep going. And then maybe have periods where you had to shut down and recoup and then you could keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. I think um, for those of us with a chronic illness, that would have looked very different and yet, at that time, I'm sure you felt stressed, fatigued, and tired. And that was very real for what was going on for you. But mm-hmm. maybe you knew there was an end point? Oh, yeah. I would I would agree with that, I think. And talking to some other individuals that have chronic illnesses that are going through um, graduate programs, have very busy schedules, Like their, their track looks different. Their day mm-hmm. looks different. What they have to do during their day is different than like if someone like myself who doesn't have that diagnosis. Like it's still tough for both for both parties, right. for sure. But it's different, and I think that the best thing that we can do for anyone with a chronic illness, or just people honestly in general, mm-hmm. is just know that the experience that they are having is completely valid, and that it is their own. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're experiencing something different. Like I know one thing I struggled with when I was in college is I. I still don't like this saying, but I dislike it when people say, oh, I'm just so busy because everyone's busy. It Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you are working 80 hours a week and never have time for yourself. Like, yes, you're busy, but also the person that's working six hours a week and has other stuff going on in their life that might on the outside look like they don't have the same time constraints as others. Like everyone is busy because busy is, again, a perception that you have for yourself. Yeah, I love that. And so it's it's about the experience that you are having. And so I think just if you're someone with a chronic illness or someone that's not having compassion for yourself and the people around you and what their experience is, is going to be really, really valuable, whether or not they fit into a certain definition of chronic disease or chronic illness or something like that. Yeah. Maybe don't put yourself in a box or don't put someone that you know with a chronic illness into a box. Yeah. That might be one of the nicest things is allow them to be what they're experiencing. Yeah, I think that's really true. So we would love to hear how you would describe being chronically ill. Yes, we would really like to hear that. Because these are just, again, these are just our thoughts or some definitions that we found on the Googles. Mm -hmm. Uh, So please reach out to us. Um... Our email, website, Instagram is always in the show notes. 
So please reach out to us. Let us know how you would describe that so we can keep just developing this big resource of right. how you can describe being chronically ill to other people so that other people can understand that are, that are wanting to learn more and we can just help normalize chronic illness for everyone. Yes, for sure. I love it. Yay. Well, we will talk to you next time. Have a fantastic day. Yay. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please write us a review to help us reach more people like you. If you'd like to connect with Cassie and I, you can find us on Instagram at The Real Spoonies Unite. You can also join our private Facebook community, Spoonies Unite, or you can visit our website, therealspooniesunite.com, for all sorts of resources and to stay up to date with our current projects. And don't worry, you can find all of these links in the show notes below. Thank you to our wonderful Spoonie patrons for all your support, and you can become one too. That's right. All you have to do is go on over to patreon.com slash the real Spoonies Unite, and you can get all sorts of extra goodies like videos of our episodes and more. Any support is greatly appreciated. It helps enable us to create more content for all of you, as well as make this podcast sound better and better. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to be back in your ears soon.